face of adversity, today lost his battle with AIDS. He died today of a respiratory illness related to the disease. The 18-year-old hemophiliac had been hospitalized in Indianapolis since March 29th. Ryan contracted AIDS in 1984 when he received a tainted blood clotting agent during a transfusion. Today, a family spokeswoman said the teenager showed the world how to be truly courageous. When all the odds are stacked against you and when it um, is not easy uh, to do things politically, for someone his age to stand up and do the right thing, regardless of the political consequences, I think takes more courage than most of us have. Ryan received national attention when he was barred from attending school near Kokomo, Indiana in 1985. He went through a year-long court fight to return to school. Ryan later told a presidential commission on AIDS that his classmates and the community made him an outcast. I became the target of Ryan White jokes. Lies about me biting people, spitting on vegetables and cookies in grocery stores, and urinating on bathroom walls. Some restaurants threw away my dishes, and my locker was vandalized inside, and folders were marked bag and other obscenities. In 1987, Ryan and his family moved to Cicero, Indiana, where he was readily welcomed by students and faculty at Hamilton Heights High. His courage to stand up to his illness won't soon be forgotten. This one's for Ryan. At singer Elton John, he kept a constant vigil with Ryan's family last week, and he dedicated this song to the teenager last night at the Farm Aid concert in Indianapolis. Singer Michael Jackson and Donald Trump arrived in Indianapolis late today to try to console the White family. Funeral arrangements for Ryan. He was the boy next door who first showed to a stunned nation that no one is safe from the risk of AIDS. In Indianapolis, Ryan White dies at 18, the victim of AIDS. In Cincinnati, long lines at a museum indicted for obscenity. Today, a judge intervenes. And this evening, nursing, a shortage of those who care enough to care for the ill. This is NBC Nightly News, reported by Garrett Utley. Good evening. As you've just seen in our opening headlines, there is a common thread which runs through our report this evening. It is about health, about attitudes, about looking at life in these United States. And we begin with a story of Ryan White. He died today. He was 18 years old. For the last five years, he lived with AIDS. He got it from a blood transfusion. He died in Indianapolis from an illness related to that disease. During his long struggle, Ryan White attracted nationwide attention and sympathy. Here's James Polk. The doctor who announced Ryan White's death was touched by his life. He had no bitterness. With an honest simplicity, his was the voice that many, if not most, first heard. Five years ago, just before Christmas, Ryan White was told he had AIDS and became a pariah among his playmates. I became known as the AIDS boy. Ryan, at a Washington hearing two years ago. It was my decision to live a normal life, go to school, be with friends, and enjoy day-to-day -day activities. It was not going to be easy. Even at church, people would not shake my hand. Ryan was barred from his small-town Indiana school. His family went to court, fought and won, but finally moved away. His legacy? I think Ryan has probably shown the world how to be truly courageous. At this farm aid concert in Indianapolis last night, singer Elton John said a public goodbye before he went back to Ryan's bedside. This one's for Ryan. Your candle burned out long before Your legend ever did Singer Michael Jackson got billionaire Donald Trump to fly him to Indiana on a private jet to comfort the family. The funeral is planned Wednesday. The governor has ordered flags flown at half-staff. In many places in Indiana tonight, Ryan White is being shown more respect in death than he was in life. Garrick? Thank you, Jim. About 75,000 people have died from AIDS in this country. Ryan White was only one of them. Yet, he was able to communicate something important to the country. How we really dealt with During his short life, Ryan White was without peer as a spokesman for the victims of AIDS. His goal, he once said, was that AIDS be treated as a disease, not as a dirty word. And perhaps more than anyone else, he succeeded in doing that. 
partly because of who he was, quiet, determined, and also because of what he was not. He was not always subjected to the slings and arrows often directed at homosexuals and intravenous drug users. He was, after all, only a boy. He was the boy next door who first showed to a stunned nation that no one is safe from the risk of AIDS. That didn't make Ryan White more deserving of understanding or sympathy than any of the tens of thousands of other AIDS victims who suffer the same pain he endured. But to a nation consumed by misunderstanding and fear of the disease, he was a victim. From People ABC listen. News, World News Sunday, here's Forrest Sawyer. Good evening. 18-year-old Ryan White, who struggled five and a half years to overcome AIDS and prejudice, died early this morning of complications resulting from the disease. Ryan said he only wanted to be a normal, happy teenager. Instead, he became a national spokesman for AIDS victims and helped educate a nation. ABC's Beth Nissen remembers how he lived. Ryan White was the bravest kind of soldier, the kind who goes first on the path. He was diagnosed with AIDS five years ago when he was 13, one of the first children known to have AIDS at that time. He spent the rest of his life fighting two invisible but powerful enemies, the virus inside him and the infectious fear and ignorance that surrounded him. He wrote fag on his folder inside his locker and put some, a lot of obscenities uh, on magic marker. They wrote his locker all up. Parents in Ryan's hometown of Russiaville, Indiana, tried to keep Ryan out of school. The courts ordered him admitted but he had to use a separate bathroom, eat his lunch alone. There was a lot of people who thought that if you breathe the same air, you can get AIDS. Students in Cicero, Indiana, knew better. When Ryan and his mother moved there, they were welcomed. Ryan grew taller and made friends, grew weaker, but kept talking about AIDS. Certainly will. One million Americans are infected with the AIDS virus, and half of them do not know they are. Too many of those most at risk IV drug abusers, their sex partners, and their children do nothing to protect against AIDS. Too many of those who do know about AIDS still do nothing to protect against it. Ryan White founded a national organization of athletes and entertainers to spread the word on what AIDS is and how to avoid it, to carry the message when he no longer could. Celebrities, including Michael Jackson, began arriving in Cicero today to honor Ryan, to wish him Godspeed. I believe in God, and, you know, I believe there's a heaven, and I just, you know, I think if, when you die, you're going to go to a better place. He was the boy next door who first showed to a stunned nation that no one is safe from the risk of AIDS. He had no bitterness. With an honest simplicity, his was the voice that many, if not most, first heard even though his was not the first voice. Ryan's life, not the details of his death, must be remembered. Superstars and statesmen and cameras from around the world gathered today in mid-America to say goodbye to the kid from Kokomo. This is Entertainment Tonight for Wednesday, April 11th, 1990. for being with us. Mary Hart is away today. I'm Lisa Gibbons. And I'm John Tesh. Michael Jackson was there, so was Elton John. Their pal, Ryan White, the teenager who brought a kid down the street image to the AIDS crisis, was remembered today in Indianapolis, Indiana. The funeral of Ryan White, the courageous teenager who fought against AIDS and the prejudice surrounding the disease, has attracted big media coverage. The importance of Ryan's battle extends far beyond mere news. I figure, you know, since this is the way the hand was dealt, you know, that I'm, i i got to live with it this way, and I'm going to try to help anybody I can. Phil Donahue rebroadcast his show with White on Monday, and PBS in New York is also re-airing their special on AIDS that White was involved with. Like you can only get AIDS by direct blood contact or sexual contact. The media, and Hollywood in particular, embraced Ryan White and his cause. Stars were privileged to stand beside him at events supporting AIDS research. A TV movie was made about his life. And Ryan not only was a script consultant and an actor in one scene, but was also on the set regularly to help out in any way he could. His efforts were tireless, and Hollywood loved him for it. 
During his last days, Elton John was at his bedside. After his death, Michael Jackson and Donald Trump arrived to console his mom. His funeral today brought out superstars and political leaders. For even though Ryan White's body was laid to rest today, Hollywood and all the world seems determined to keep his brave battle alive. The Ryan White story is not over. Dial Books for Young Readers is publishing his biography, chronicling his five-year fight against the disease.